गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स प्रोफेसर ब्रह्म सिंह हॉर्टिकल्चर फाउंडेशन बी एस एच एफ ए नॉट फॉर प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड माई सेल्फ वेलकम यू ऑल टू द टॉक नंबर नाइन ऑफ दिस सीरीज नेम्ड एज फॉर एच अर्बन हॉर्टिकल्चर फॉर हेल्थ एंड happiness bshf is thankful to bear semenis to sponsor this webinar series i am happy to welcome co organizers dr pitam kaliya icr rafi ahmed kidwai awardee former head division of vegetable science and coordinator School of Horticulture Sciences, ICAR, IARI, New Delhi, and Dr. Shalendra Rajan, former director, ICAR, Central Institute of Subtropical Horticulture, Lucknow. The webinar today is on soil-less urban horticulture by Dr. Sai Ram Reddy, Palisheria. co-founder and chief scientific officer in urban kisan farms and director heartfulness institute hyderabad thanks to dr sai ram reddy for having agreed to deliver webinar today friends as you know today is world water day wish you all a happy world water day bshf is celebrating the day by organizing a webinar on soil less that is water based horticulture in urban areas where land for farming is almost not there land for farming is not there in urban areas but the talk today is by co-founder of urban kisan farms <coughs> dr sai ram reddy who will speak on the success of his company or organization urban kisan means farming in urban areas friends according to me soil less horticulture in urban areas where farm fields or space for farming are limited or not there but it is important and futuristic horticulture whether it is ornamental horticulture or food horticulture friends soil less horticulture to urban areas is not a fancy but a necessity keeping in view proliferation of cities the fresh food supply climate change huge water requirement for horticulture and other factors without soil how horticultural food vegetable fruits medicinal plant etc production in urban areas is going on in many developed countries and in india too that is what dr sai ram reddy is going to talk about dr reddy will be highlighting progress on urban horticulture in general and efforts of his farm urban kisan farms in particular questions can be raised in comment or chat box which will be answered after the talk now i request dr pitam kaliya ji if he has joined to formally introduce the speaker
the voice is not audible dr kalia you okay, are sir. not audible thank you good evening i friends ha uh, yes 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 professor brahm singh ji and uh, today audible sir is it okay sir now am i audible hello sir am i audible yes sir you are audible please you are audible okay 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 sir. okay thank you uh, most respected uh, uh, founder bshf professor brahm singh ji and today's speaker uh, dr sai ram reddy ji and uh, viewers co organizer dr shailendra rajan ji uh, it's my privilege to introduce uh, today's speaker dr sai ram who will be uh, uh, speaking on urban horticulture and urban kisan achievements dr sai ram is a passionate researcher and entrepreneur aimed at towards uh, developing environmentally safe and sustainable agriculture technologies dr sai ram obtained his uh, doctorate in plant biotechnology and did his uh, post doctorate research in indian institute of sciences bangalore as a national fellow of biotechnology and in uh uni as a nih fellow dr sai ram also did uh, various courses from nlsar indian school of business indian institute of management bangalore Staff, uh, stanford mits and uh, harvard universities presently dr sai ram is uh, leading the r&d of his own startup urban kisan which he'll be talking about in detail a vertical farming pioneer in india urban kisan is uh, listed in the top five most influential projects in india for the year 2020 by pmi urban kisan was also awarded startup of the year 2021 by economic times company of the year 2021 by the inner review and global sustainability award and innovative school enterprise of the year 2021 by chai sustainability summit 2021 urban kisan received uh, investments from the leading investors like by combinator usa and bsf germany Dr Sai Ram has uh, published uh, over 30 research articles in peer reviewed international journals presented many more topics in several scientific forums in international bodies and received many awards for his scientific uh, contributions including national fellow in biotechnology by department of plant by uh, department of biotechnology government of india best project leader and uh, best mentor by jk organizations outstanding biotechnologist by the wcptc sri lanka and uh, distinguished scientist by science and technology and siri foundation and also dr ab g Abdul Kalam Excellency Award, Indian Achievers Award for the year 2020. Dr. Sai Ram was recently listed in the top 10 leaders in agriculture industry for the year 2020 by CEO Insights Magazines. Dr. Sai Ram has been a sincere seeker of spirituality practicing heartfulness way of uh, meditation for more than two decades he is currently extending his uh, voluntary services as 
director of uh, heartfulness institute india and also as a trainer of heartfulness meditation and contribute contributing his part in building stress free society orienting towards uh, higher life goals uh, i think the uh, today's speaker is uh, rare we have who has uh, contributed uh, quite a lot and has uh, uh, been awarded uh, suitably for his uh, contributions and we would be uh, very, very happy to and the viewers would be happy to listen to his experiences and uh, the uh, urban kisan which he has uh, uh, founded him himself uh, uh, would be viewer would, would be interested to, to know about that in detail so with that I invite Dr. Sainiram to deliver his talk. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Brahma Sahib and uh, Kalia Sahib. Um, good evening, Rajan Sahib. Um, uh, it's uh, my privilege to share the, uh, the screen with all of Dr. you. Dr. Sainiram, please. Yeah. So uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you once again. I welcome uh, all the viewers today for uh, our today's talk on soilless horticulture approach. Uh, for uh, sustainable nutritional and environmental security. So the uh, let's dive a little deep into the uh, the needs of it. I mean, what is actually happening? The urbanization is is happening so rapidly. More than four billion people live in urban areas globally, which is about uh, fifty four percent. It is estimated that the number will rise up to uh, 7 billion by 2050, which is about a two thirds of global population. So people tend to migrate to cities as they grow richer. This is what is uh, being uh, said by the economists. So, and then uh, due to the constant increase in urban population and their food needs, urban and peri-urban agriculture is also uh, growing rapidly. There is also huge demand and necessity to do it so. According to FAO, 800 million people worldwide produce protein urban gardens. However, where the soil is polluted, especially attention must be paid to avoid the potential transfer of contaminations and the potential risk of uh, urban uh, population getting affected by these contaminants. So urban soil and waters are getting contaminated heavily. This is what uh, is well documented. POPs like you know, the organochloric uh, pesticides, the PCBs, PCDDs, I mean, many of such kind of uh, pesticides and heavy metals are abundantly found in urban horticulture gardens and uh, urban uh, uh, parks. And this is uh, the case across the globe, not just uh, in one city. I mean, India, almost all the cities are found to be affected with this kind of uh, problem. They pose potential risk to human health due to bioaccumulation of these contaminants through the vegetables of cattle and chicken, which are grown or grazed over these kind of uh, lands. So this is where the hydroponics is actually um, gaining more attention as it requires less space and it requires no soil and things like that. So this is a growing uh, field. Hydroponic global market is growing uh, rapidly. So today it is about 9.5 uh, uh, billion US dollars and it is expected to grow up to 17.9 billion dollars in another uh, four years of time. So this is a, this is a, a very rapid growth. Uh, and attention is being gained. 
So, and, and carefully, if you see that what is this all being built around is actually, you know, the crop share, the tomatoes, lettuces, uh, peppers, and cucumbers are taking the majority of the share. Rest all are not really, um, uh, I mean, you know, uh, being grown in this uh, hydroponic gardens at this juncture. But these are a few crops uh, which are extensively being grown. So what is the advantage of uh, the soilless farming or hydroponic uh, farming? So it, it doesn't require soil and it adds uh, anywhere from 2x to 10x uh, uh, growth rate and 80 to 95 percent of uh, the less water, uh, you know, the demands. I, it literally, there is no requirement of weeding. And nutrient efficiency is very high because you regulate uh, what to be supplied to the uh, plant so that you can reap the same out of the plant. And uh, fewer, very limited or no pesticides, you know, the, it, it depends on the kind of uh, hydroponic system what you build and it is uh, quite possible. So in, in the market, there are different ways of different styles, different systems and different methods of uh, these hydroponics is being deployed. So some countries uh, are in a very advanced stage of deploying this hydroponic garden. Some countries are still in the very initial stages of uh, adopting this technology. So this is a well, fundamental thing is like, you know, the home kits or kitchen garden kits. So where you can deploy these kits, I mean, there are quite a few companies which are uh, supplying these uh, uh, home kits. So these kits can be deployed in balconies or rooftops, or, and there are also indoor kits where they, you, you, you can have uh, uh, LED lights to grow the food. And you, in the recent days, uh, with the, uh, you know, the adaptation of the technology, there are the smart home kits, which are uh, again abundantly coming into the market, these are, uh, in my view, are uh, like a very fancy and uh, very stylish. Can be um, used in the kitchen for a few um, herbs requirements, or I mean, you know, the, um, something like that as a, as a decorative piece also. Um, why I say is because the what you get is a limited food, but these are uh, uh, very tightly linked with the technologies like IOTs, where you can monitor the plants, plant health, and, 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 and even you can see it on your mobile. And this can be operated uh, from far distances also. This is fun and this is uh, um, a fancy and having little utility. Of course, there is some utility. This is a... a much bigger uh, space uh, at this juncture in developing countries. The small and medium-sized growers, uh, I call them as a uh, neighborhood growers. Uh, small uh, in, a, in a neighborhood uh, with a small rooftop or a backyard garden, which can be converted to uh, a hydroponic garden and, and the produce can be sold then and there itself in the same community. So this is uh, picking up uh, good as, uh, as a good income um, and also neighborhoods are welcoming this kind of a gardening because they, they, they can see where it is being grown, how it is being grown. And uh, they, they know that they are getting the clean food. And this is an another, uh, the smart farms. They're also called container farms. Uh, there are companies like Fright Farm uh, in USA. So they have uh, come out with this technology where the the abandoned containers are converted into a farming uh, uh, containers. And uh, these containers are high-tech containers at the end, and they can be um, grown in the coldest places like Norway and uh, in, the, uh, in the hottest places like you know, the uh, uh, Sahara deserts. It doesn't matter what is the climate outside, but still you can, um, uh, you can get your uh, food produced so these are, uh, this business is also growing, but it's a very niche kind of a thing uh, being used in extreme climatic conditions. This is uh, another uh, pattern of farming called in-store farming. There is a company called Infarm in Europe. Um, so what they do is they build this uh, shelves, um, you know, the, where uh, their um, plants are grown under the LED lights. And these shelves are actually deployed in uh, the grocery stores. 
and and uh, this is the best thing where the most of the herbs and greens customers can walk in and then harvest the fresh uh, produce uh, from there itself so uh, the companies like metro uh, has invested heavily in this company and 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 this is being now promoted in several other countries so it is now there um, uh, almost in five six countries in uh, europe and also in us and this kind of uh, monoculture and medium size uh, uh, cultivations are also popular in countries like india so in, in india we, we, we see these hydroponics adapted for uh, um, bell pepper farming or cucumber farming or cherry tomatoes uh, or some uh, sort of lettuces uh, these are about half an acre to one acre to two acres this is the kind of uh, size of the uh, farms and and this kind of farms you can see uh, in almost uh, in the suburban areas of all the metro cities in india so uh, not many but at least one or two farms are um, available this is just picking up this kind of uh, large scale indoor farming this uh, this is not at there in in countries like india but this is there in the other parts of uh, the world you see the the left side one is a round circle kind of a, a system is they call it as a grand pass dome and and this technology is being adapted in um, in in japan uh, by a couple of companies so they'll be like you know in the center of uh, the dome they put the uh, nursery seedlings uh, nursery grown seedlings and uh, every day they keep pushing them like you know the and then they put uh, the next round of uh, nursery uh, plants so so when the plant is growing it requires more space uh, in this dome and when it goes towards the periphery so you get the more space the plant uh, gains more uh, the space so and the harvest happens from the periphery of this dome this is the kind of a system the company in plenty they are doing this uh, the real vertical they call it as zip grow farms um these are huge farms with about uh, 30 to uh, uh, 40 feet height um, you know the and uh, and the other 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 type of farms are like you know the bovary farms this is also in us in new jersey um this is a football size uh, uh, indoor farm with uh, vertical uh, towers so where they grow um, mostly lettuces so these are uh, european farms uh, primarily they are very large greenhouses um, these are for tomatoes and some lettuces uh, they are being uh, grown in germany spain um, and 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 also in countries like uh, france so there you can see this kind of a large scale farms so what we do here in arun kisan so arun kisan actually founded in the year 2018 uh, in hyderabad uh, we build farms in the neighborhood and sell produce through um, arun kisan uh, branded retail stores and also our e-commerce e platform directly to the consumers so our philosophy is like uh, the soil for soilless farming with no pesticide application um, and these farms are uh, typically in the neighborhoods um, so that you know we will be able to uh, deliver this produce uh, in the freshest farm with the minimal um, uh, minimal carbon miles you know the uh, because the less transport so we actually started our entire business with uh, the home quits so uh, this is uh, because you know the you know the, i came across one article um, in you know in 2015 so where uh, um, you know the agriculture university in hyderabad have conducted uh, a research they collected um, you know the uh, the vegetable samples from mandi to supermarkets to the street vendors to organic stores and all sorts of uh, uh, you know the retail uh, stores and retail uh, supplements and they uh, they have done the analysis of pesticides as well as heavy metals and to their great surprise so they see that across all sorts of stores wherever even including organic they see the heavy metals are extremely high 
uh, they are anywhere from 25 to 70 times. And these, these heavy metals are, we are talking about something like lead and arsenic. So the what troubled me at that time was like, uh, you know, the uh, as per WHO, more than 70% of Indian women are anemic. And then they, with any problem, they go to a doctor and the first thing they advise is eat lots of greens. But these greens are carrying these heavy metals like lead and arsenic, which counteract on our hemoglobin and it makes us more and more anemic. So I, I was kind of puzzled and I had no idea what to do, uh, how do we help our uh, uh, sisters. So um, I was trying to do something with the, uh, the regular soil-based home gardening. But I see troubles like, you know, the, if you are not there available, if you go for a vacation or a function for two, three days and your plants are in trouble. That is how when, you know, the, I, I see this um, hydroponics as a perfect solution to help at least to meet the, uh, the needs of uh, home needs of uh, uh, leafy green supplies. So that is when that we started uh, building everything in my home, in my balcony. Uh, and started designing the suitability of these kits to our Indian balconies. So that is how we started our company, Arun Kisan, in, a, in, a, in order to uh, grow this, uh, uh, use these home kits to grow these uh, kitchen gardens and meet the needs of uh, at least our uh, leafy greens so that, you know, that we, can, uh, we can come out of, you know, the uh, out of the load to grow these uh, leafy greens, uh, you know, in, in the suburban areas or the river beds or, or any of the water bodies around the uh, urban areas where primarily they are contaminated with this, uh, uh, in the industrial effluents and then run out of the, uh, you know, the um, urban sewerages. <clears throat> these are the uh, kind of a kids we uh, built and then um, this was our primary business. And then we started slowly moving on to building farms in the urban areas. This was our first uh, rooftop farm we built and typically to grow these Indian leafy grains uh, because we see that uh, lettuces and all, I mean, yeah, they are high value, but um, the demand is uh, not so much. If we really want to help our, um, uh, our friends and uh, families, so it is very important to do something with these Indian crops. And we, are, we also started building these suburban farms to, to meet the large scale uh, needs of the, uh, the urban uh, dwellers. And we built, uh, moved on to, moved out of the leaves and then started also growing other vegetables like broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, and many other uh, uh, Indian vegetables. Then we built this uh, um, indoor farms so for this, we actually came out of uh, our own light technology. These are, these are the LED lights developed by us. So we had to do it because uh, the LED lights otherwise, uh, which are imported from Japan um, and, and Europe, they're Osaram and Philips, these are the leaders. So they're very expensive. It is almost impossible for us to build a quality indoor farm uh, and then make that farm uh, economically viable. So we have done a lot of research and came out of uh, developed these lights and then started building these uh, uh, indoor farms. So as we have these indoor farms and then we uh, floated our brand to, into a retail um, a market. So we started uh, a, a chain of stores in, in Hyderabad. So where uh, the every uh, retail store is typically attached with uh, a farm. So where most of the leafy greens are grown there and that's, it's uh, supplied then and there itself. And the, all the other vegetables are grown in the suburban uh, farms where uh, we are built. And the same thing is channeled through uh, our retail stores. We also uh, have the, um, you know, the online portal and then what we did is like um, uh, something very interesting is the uh, started uh, converting the value addition uh, of what we actually uh, growing in um, urban farms. So we came out with uh, uh, the salad recipes, which are uh, palatable to uh, our Indian, um, um, you know, the tongues like paste. 
So the most of the uh, the salads and then uh, these bowls are actually Europeanized. They are so bland, and uh, most of us don't like it. But this is the most healthy food, and 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 we and everyone is actually longing towards it. But we don't have the right uh, palate for that. So that is when we have done a lot of research in that came out with this, uh, and this uh, actually uh, helped us to sustain with our business. Uh, because this is now uh, almost 50% of our retail business uh, is value added business i'm um, highlighting this because uh, the if you have to uh, make this entire ecosystem of uh, urban farming sustainable because you know the what happens is the space is expensive and your uh, operational expenses are uh, more because you 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 have to use the uh, commercial power uh, still we don't have the hydroponic farming recognized as a regular farming the power used here is charged as commercial power it's a very uh, uh, expensive thing and things like that so it it makes the farming um, uh, non viable at this juncture so but when we convert the produce into a value added produce like something like this then the entire proposition comes to uh, be profitable and uh, this becomes more sustainable so we we were fortunate to uh, get covered uh, in the initial days by these of um, you know the media leaders like Forbes or TechCrunch, Times, uh, Discovery Channel, and, and all. We were featured very well, and we have a uh, our brand Im ambassador uh, Samantha. Um, she's a popular South Indian film star, and she also happened to be a, a early stage investor in our company, and we. Uh, we were again fortunate to have uh, these investors like Y Combinator, Pioneer Fund, and uh, BASF. So we are thankful uh, to NAM uh, AIDEA for um, helping us in our initial uh, incubation days to build our uh, business. So we had three uh, co founders with uh, Right Blend, myself uh, as a biologist, uh, coming from uh, the experience in uh, growing vegetables. Uh, coming uh, from the seed industry. So my colleague Vihari is from economics background and my other friend uh, Srinivas is from tech background. So this blend has actually helped us to build the farm, not only uh, as a grower, but also a, a techie uh, a company. So what we uh, are trying to address uh, in Arbun Kisan are the three primary problems which are being faced uh, especially uh, in the urban areas. So now one primary fundamental problem is water. Water for our domestic uses itself is a scarcity. How can we have this farming where generally farming requires a lot of water? So this is one major problem we are trying to address with this technology. The second problem is that uh, the pollution. I, I, and it's like if I have to give you an example uh, in Hyderabad, so uh, one survey um, uh, shows that 80% uh, of leafy greens, uh, which are being um, sold uh, across the uh, retail uh, platforms in Hyderabad, are actually uh, grown on Musi River bed. You know, the Musi River is said to be the, one of the most polluted uh, uh, rivers. It's like with all industry, industrial effluents channeled into it. And that's what is the water and that's what is the soil which is being used to grow these leafy greens. And imagine what the kind of uh, the heavy metal accumulations, the data, what I told you, uh, published by uh, agriculture universities, uh, typically correlates with this kind of uh, uh, cultivation. And the third problem, what we see is that very unhygienic handling of uh, the produce. Uh, so this is even if you grow the produce which is coming from little away from these urban areas are also uh, being handled uh, very unhygienic way and causing problems to the urban dwellers. <clears throat> so uh, what we actually uh, did is in our R&D we have done extensive research to address uh, several problems. So we developed the nutrient formulation for several Indian vegetables. Though hydroponic uh, nutrient formulations are available, uh, but most of the uh, these nutrient formulations are, uh, uh, are typically tuned to this, uh, you know, the temperate crops. 
So because that is what um, is the data available, that is what is ex ex extensively being cultivated otherwise in hydroponics. And we also developed low cost photosynthetic lights. It's not only the low cost photosynthetic lights and these are the light spectrum which is tuned perfectly for uh, 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 tropical crops which requires a little more uh, a different uh, the spectrum than the uh, uh, temperate crops. We have developed IOTs and uh, also developed the programs to regulate the entire greenhouse nutrients and 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 everything. Uh, we we our target is to uh, make this hydroponic farming as less tech uh, uh, what you call um, um, tech trained people uh, necessity. So anyone uh, with not having much of uh, knowledge should be able to operate this farm. So we, uh, we have been working on this AML-based software for crop management and also for uh, quality uh, regulation. So our intervention uh, in the tech actually brought down the, uh, the cost of uh, uh, hydroponic setup by 60%. Uh, compared to the global standards. So our uh, high efficiency lights actually also reduced the uh, uh, OPEX by 50% because they are like low power input and high power output uh, LED lights. It, it only requires nine watt input, but you get 24 watt uh, output uh, with these uh, uh, in the drivers which we designed here. So the, our IOT is actually um, take care of most of the uh, things like nutrient management, where we don't need to have a special uh, manpower for that. So we have been uh, screening a lot of germplasm, especially the Indian germplasm, uh, to identify the suitable germplasm for these uh, hydroponics. Because our initial days, uh, we just went and plucked some seeds and then tried to put, and it was a disaster to us. Then we realized, um, like how uh, in the germplasm is so important, selection of germplasm is so important to grow them in the soil. In the same way, it is also so important to screen and identify the suitable germplasm for uh, hydroponics. So otherwise, uh, uh, you know, the, you see, the one thing is like all Indian crops are actually bred and then screened and selected for soil not for hydroponics. This is what we should understand. The, the plant architecture and, uh, you know, the changes when it is in uh, a greenhouse and when it is a hydroponics, it is again different, you know, the, compared to the, uh, the soil. So some, you know, they bolt quickly and they grow uh, internodal elongations or, you know, the, and some of them might be having high powdery mildew susceptibility. And these are all uh, risks in uh, hydroponics. So it's, it's so important uh, for us to screen and identify something which is more, uh, uh, you know, the suitable for our uh, cultivation. We, we we found that, you know, in coriander, uh, a variety called uh, Ramses from this east-west is the most suitable. It's a highly, uh, you know, the vigorous in its growth uh, in hydroponics. The same way that we have done this kind of a research with this coriander or the spinach also. So we did this research with almost all the Indian crops from last three years we have been uh, working on this. We also developed, uh, uh, worked on that, you know, the nursery systems. Here on the right side, you can see the, this is a traditional nursery, the black pot. And we came out with a patented uh, uh, nursery tech with this a purple part. And you can make out uh, the difference in its growth, uh, you know, the, depending on how you grow the nursery also like you know the growth pattern uh, is there and uh, here we see this uh, adventus mulayam variety and the tierra's uh, variety tierra uh, seed sciences um, pollock variety they are um, very uh, very useful and very um, vigorous in hydroponics so we also have uh, i mean as i mentioned to you the light spectrum is so important so you can see the variation of their growth with the different uh, light spectrums. And uh, uh, this brinjal, we grow uh, cherry tomatoes, uh, snacky peppers, bell peppers in our farms. And these are uh, tomatoes, which are, uh, um, uh, uh, these are um, 
these are tierra agro science uh, uh, tomato hybrid uh, this is so good and it gives a uh, very profuse fruit in 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 hydroponics so this is actually not growing in uh, the aggregate and uh, hydroponics this is growing in non aggregate hydroponics so just to uh, clarify you this aggregate hydro this hydroponics is actually classified into two types uh, aggregate and non aggregate hydro hydroponics aggregate hydroponics is like you know the uh, hydroponics where you use some medium like coco peat or um, uh, some perlites or uh, um, any kind of uh, medium you know though it is not just water and this medium is just to support the root system uh, nothing much there is no intervention of uh, uh, nutrition to the plant but just give the support to the plant and also gives the aeration um kind of a things to the root zone uh, so and the non aggregate is a typical water based uh, or nft based uh, uh, hydroponic system generally these tomatoes uh, are grown in uh, aggregate based hydroponic system but we have seen this in non aggregate based hydroponic system in a vertical uh, system, uh, tower also it grows so well and yields very high three times more than uh, the regular tomato uh, aggregate based uh, hydroponic system these are cucumbers these are rigs one uh, 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 english cucumber these are uh, uh, <clears throat> so different types of uh, um, crops we have been uh, you know the uh, trying this is yellow zucchini and on the other side you do see the green zucchini and this is these are hot pepper so um, the, the at another thing what we are doing uh, at urban kisan is after uh, doing this screening of available uh, germplasm we found still there is a big deficit big gap from what is required what is most suitable for hydroponics vertical farming and that is not available in at least in the commercial germplasm it could be there with uh, the several companies in their uh, uh, unused germplasm but it's not there in the commercially released uh, uh, germplasm so then we started breeding so you see here the four different types of uh, hot pepper uh, this is these are our breeding lines which are in the uh, f4 f5 stage uh, almost in the fixing stage these are very unique types uh, of uh, uh, hot pepper where we can build them into the vertical wall so and they are uh, highly uh, short internodal uh, distances and profuse flowering and and there are, uh, some of them are like um, um, uh, they are uh, highly pungent uh, uh, thai chili kind of uh, bird bird chili kind of uh, peppers and uh, this is uh, uh, okra okra is uh, that generally that is not even grown in uh, under greenhouses because the moment you put them in under greenhouse uh you see a uh, uh, this okra plant growing like a tree so the huge internodal elongation and too much of uh, wasted to um uh, growth so it doesn't give much of uh, uh, fruits so these are our breeding lines which we will be uh, releasing shortly it may take another year or so for us to uh, wrap up this uh, program and we have uh, extremely good uh, okra and hot pepper uh, lines uh suitable for this uh, vertical hydroponic farming and these are some trials we we were working with commercially available uh, gourds like um, rich gourd bitter gourd uh, bottle gourd and and this is under non aggregate uh, uh, hydroponics these are these trials are to uh, see i mean how this can be uh, adapted to the rooftop gardening uh, uh, rooftop home gardening or kitchen gardening so the one issue here is the pollination uh, if, if since we are growing them in under polyhouse so you don't have any insect to do the poll, uh, pollination so we were uh, doing this hand pollination probably in a low tech uh, or shed net based uh, rooftop uh, kitchen gardens this might happen with the help of uh, insects we also built uh, the multi crop towers this is also keeping this uh, the rooftop kitchen gardens in mind so where you see uh, different uh, multi crops different types of crops here you see the 
uh, bitter gourd and and we have actually removed a uh, few other crops in between those towers and you see the cabbage on top and broccoli also can be grown so well um, cauliflower also can be grown so well on on the tower in the last because it requires more uh, light and they grow so good actually and another breakthrough uh, what we have achieved is with uh, uh, saffron uh, in hydroponics so last year we have done this experiment uh, very successfully so uh, we could do this in uh, hyderabad in, in in vertical hydroponic garden we harvested a huge number of uh, flowers uh, almost uh, uh, 25000 flowers we could get and then now we are working on the multiplying the bulb here uh, in hydroponics in 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 this kind of uh, hyderabad hot climate but of course in a greenhouse but still it is not say similar to kashmir this is a kashmiri variety uh, which we collected from the saffron research institute uh, um, srinagar um, and probably in another uh, one year time we'll be able to have some good protocol uh, to multiply this uh, bulb also in hydroponics and and we should be able to uh, harvest this uh, saffron uh, high quality saffron from this hydroponics one major issue in india with saffron is like we have a huge demand of saffron this is about 100 tons of uh, annual demand saffron but our production is less than uh, 30 tons so remaining everything is coming from iran which is said to be not uh, good quality compared to kashmiri saffron so and that's what is being adulterated and that's what uh, uh, is being supplied to us so uh, if we can come out with a good solution with this kind of a technology probably that would help and um, since this is this is an indoor uh, uh, format um, again this is going to be urban cultivation in a season where um, the cold store uh, cold storage is a huge spaces are available not not uh, not required to use i mean uh, 360 days of a year that they are not under use you only need this cold storage for uh, one and a half months to get this flower that's all Remaining all the time, you can just uh, put it for uh, bulb multiplication. And we are also working with uh, different uh, root crops. And another breakthrough we have achieved is with the sweet potato, uh, with the help of uh, Tuber Crop Research Institute, uh, um, Central Institute of Tuber Crop Research. Uh, so we, we got these varieties, uh, Bu Sona and the Bu Krishna, and we, we were very successfully uh, able to grow them in hydroponics with the same uh, high concentration of uh, anthocyanins. So where this kind of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, sweet potato cultivation can be, I mean, uh, adapted into the smart city building where the, the facades of the buildings are, um, are being, you know, decorated with uh, just some green uh, plants, just take green plants. That's all, uh, you know, there is nothing no other use but whereas if we can replace uh, these uh, this kind of steak green plant twines with uh, the sweet potato and you, you can add beauty to the uh, the buildings and also reap some benefit out of it so so the but the key challenges in this uh, this technology are uh, still remains uh, you know the very high uh, you know the i just listed a few of them here the technology is still maturing. This is what we should understand because um, you know, we, we, we say that it's still not viable or because technology is still not mature. As I've been talking um, in, in my talk also, you must have heard several things are not tested, several things are not tried. Um, you know, the, we still don't have uh, much of a cost effective um, like tech uh, available uh, with, with me, most of the developing countries. See, it is still investment intensive, um, you know. Of course, the, you, you do get, you know, the a few, few folds higher, uh, uh, you know, the crop yields with this and the quality of this crop is also high. You may be able to achieve the ROI uh, very quickly, but still you need investment. So that is something, you know, the, um, we need to see the government might... Uh, uh, have to step in here and support the farmers 
to subsidize their uh, infrastructure, then the, then it, it becomes like more easy. More farmers would be able to adopt and add more value to the uh, the society. So, like you know, the um, we have done uh, like an, an experiment. So we uh, like you know, they generally hydroponic produce is expensive. That's what is the uh, the the truth in the market. So we wanted to break that uh, kind of a notion. So we uh, we grow uh, cucumbers and tomatoes in our, uh, our hydroponics units, so one acre each in, in, in greenhouse. And then uh, we supplied this produce to the uh, Mandi, uh, right to Bazaar in, in Hyderabad, where we never mentioned it is a hydroponic produce. And this is like, like we are like any other farmer and we supplied this produce to them. We wanted to see how that economics and what what actually happens, whether the customer will be able to recognize the uh, value of the quality what we are supplying or whether this vendor will be able to make any benefit out of uh, the quality what we supply. To, where, to our very great supply, surprise, that same day evening that vendor called us and again asked like, are you going to supply tomorrow also? So then tomorrow next day we went and st stood there and then wanted to see what actually happens. So, so what happens in the morning, like four o'clock, the farmer brings the produce and uh, put it to the, uh, the vendor there. So, and then uh, the price, let's say that 20 rupees a kilo in the morning till uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock. And then price drops, it, it goes to 15 rupees. And uh, post lunch time, like it, it further drops to 10 rupees. And by evening, and he'll say that buy, give me whatever price you want to give, at a throwaway price. So then actually what happens with the produce, if you see here, there, there is a natural grading. So when they're in a heap of this produce, the buyers who come uh, early in the morning, they do the grade, take the best A plus grade. And then the A grade, then the B grade, then the C grade. That is the kind of uh, left out uh, the produce in that heap, which is uh, put before the vendor by the farmer. So in our case, uh, what has happened? So most of the 80 to 85% of the produce is either A or uh, A plus uh, grade. That is where the vendor could, uh, you know, the, realize more value out of uh, uh, the quality. So this is the best proof, I um, mean, you know, the, which we have demonstrated. And with that kind of like we, the, the tomato, we kind of got uh, uh, in peak season, uh, peak time, like one ton uh, per acre per day. That's the kind of uh, harvest we got, tomato. So definitely we can get um, uh, good profits and we can uh, get the uh, investment back, but we need to have money to uh, invest. So, and third point is like uh, the markets are uh, still very sensitive because the people, the moment you say hydroponics, there are still a, a segment of people always question. They're saying this is not a natural farming. They, this is not growing in soil. This may not be having uh, nutrients. This may not be having, uh, you know, the, all the natural uh, requirement, what we're supposed to get from this. So, uh, but this is not true. I mean, a lot of uh, research has been already published but some, uh, you know, awareness still has to go. Uh, you know, the, that awareness has to be picked up. These consumers still need to accept this as also a natural um, uh, farming approach. So until then, that, that sensitivity still remains. And non-availability of uh, genotypes, as I mentioned to you, the, the, the crops are not selected for... Uh, hydroponics, you have a very limited crops which are bred for uh, uh, controlled environment uh, farming. And, and even from controlled environment farming, when we move on to hydroponics, still there is going to be a, a difference in their uh, plant architecture. So it, currently it is not available in the form of readily usable format, like you know the released varieties or uh, hybrids. There's a lot more research or breeding activities has to happen, keeping this in mind and do the selections in these kind of systems. So uh, put together will make this entire system more viable. So, and also high expectations from the farmers. One side, uh, sorry, consumers. One side consumers say this is not uh, natural. This is one set of consumers. And other set of consumers see that this is the best uh, 
um, approach and their expectations go very high even if the small scratch on the the surface of a fruit and they are uh, uh, intolerant of it because their expectations is uh, very high so all these questions uh, i'm sure all these challenges will be answered uh, down the line so uh, many institutions many um, you know the corporates or startups have to work on it to make this uh, more successful so thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak on this subject so uh, i'll be very happy to take any questions uh, if we have uh, <clears throat> thank you dr shairam for giving us the very interesting detailed and useful talk uh, consumer oriented and the farmer oriented at two uh, farmer when i say the urban farmer uh, i request uh, my click uh, dr shalend rajan just moderate the interesting talk in an interesting way uh, thank you sir a beautiful uh, the talk which was quite different from other higher phonics talks uh, not only uh, dealing with the advantages uh, and the international scenario but it was in very much interesting uh, giving some uh, glimpses how the home kits are dev- have been developed then smart home kits then not it is now not only fancy but uh, it has gone to the container farming and the in store farming and the consumers can harvest their crop these are the some of the uh, in, uh, major points which have been very well uh, given by an experience uh, person i like dr saira which is uh, unparalleled then fruits in uh, uh, then we should uh, uh, acknowledge his uh, uh, the background which he has prepared for that why hydroponics are important because why these are needed by the urban people he has very well dealt like uh, given example of anemic uh, women in india how greens are required but it is not possible sometimes and in hyderabad and other places he has given example how uh, we are uh, in a difficult uh, position to uh, cope up with this problem another important thing which uh, i could i can flag that is the they have come up with the artificial light particularly led environment that, that has been developed by their team that is a additional advantage advantage uh, by having more control and again having the economics of Uh, reduce the economics of this uh, system because it is uh, becoming very difficult to import the uh, these leds and depend uh, being dependent on them if we develop indian system uh, particularly the uh, innovations in our country that will be more useful another important part was that value addition can make it serve, uh, sustainable otherwise it is difficult to sometimes due to high uh, cost the hydroponics uh, are sometimes uh, not uh, sustainable because uh, it is uh, there are many factors but uh, value addition for the urb, uh, urban people that is important and sustainability uh, can be uh, through that the leafy uh, green uh, uh, vegetables particularly not only those but he has given example of uh, many vegetables i think uh, the large area of the vegetable crops which we have seen in the hydroponics that is not common mostly it is uh, difficult to see and uh, there are examples of nutrient uh, uh, this uh, optimization led lights uh, they are they are going on many i uh, their experiments on uh, uh, nutrient not only uh, solution but the breeding uh, of crops also the iots iml based software development that softwares are now becoming important particularly less human intervention and making most of things automated for that purpose a good team has been built up by them and reduction in the over co- the cost is about 50% if we compare it with the somewhat important entire system it is about 50% that is commendable and uh, that is the one of the reasons for the their success and they can go for the open market and competing with the local uh, producers now it is very difficult by the people who are producing in the hydroponics so reducing risk of the hydroponics through suitable varieties this is one of the uh, important uh, areas where we, they started working particularly the outcome is uh, chili hot chili that is uh, important then their patents 
definitely those patents uh, uh, will be uh, fruitful for them, not only for them, but the light spectrum which they have studied and the additional crops in hydroponics that is beautiful. And finally, they have placed the hydroponics uh, in a way where the breeding is supporting. So uh, again, the aggregate and non-aggregate hydroponics here made a good difference and how the crops can be coming up with the, and where the systems can be beautifully utilized as per the crop requirement. That was the thing. And multi-crop <coughs> that is uh, somewhat important. And uh, if it is available, that is uh, the, uh, uh, I should say, one can be more interested. Only based on only one or two, three crops, hydroponics, it is somewhat difficult to uh, popularize or sustain some in some of the environments. But one of the examples of saffron in uh, hydroponics, that is a good example, because it can grow in uh, <laughs> media also. But uh, another example of cold storage, utilization of cold storage, I will say that that will be uh, fulfilling the requirement of the chilling of the combs also. Because the flowering in saffron, it is somewhat difficult if we multiply combs also. So the chilling can be very well substituted by our cold storage. Only temperature manipulations, standardization will be required. And sweet potato, uh, uh, these uh, stories, and those are very important. But he has beautifully uh, elaborated the key challenges and he has listed all those things as a knowledgeable person and we all were benefited and particularly the hydroponics not only from the for, for the sake of the production but is going to market competing with others that is the beauty of all these his efforts and we compliment him for uh, this is uh, such a nice and very very interesting uh, talk which we all we were we were all benefited thank you very much thank you dr rajan uh, dr kalia would you like to uh, supplement? Yes, sir. Uh, sir although in detail, Dr. Rajan has already elaborated uh, the talk, uh, but uh, I can say only that uh, this is a, a wonderful talk in a different uh, style we have had uh, with the uh, personal experience that Sai Ram has uh, detailed here and also Indianizing uh, because hydroponic is known since long, but uh, making it Indianized depending upon our climatic condition and requirement of our consumer, that is wonderful. Uh, and uh, we're carrying on this onslaught uh, to uh, also of uh, breeding varieties and diverse varieties, diverse crops. Uh, uh, he is trying to make suitable so as to make this system sustainable. That's very important that we have seen in the past uh, from protected cultivation point of view, just. Uh, uh, dwelling at only two, three crops so will not make the, the system sustainable. It has been sustainable and quality is the major factor from the consumer's point of view. That also he has mentioned that when we get uh, uh, most issues coming from the farm, there are a lot of blemishes on them, and uh, uh, most of uh, the uh, consumers in today's world look forward for bad quality that look at external uh, quality of the produce has been wonderful and they are ready to pay any amount for that. Uh, and uh, the customization of uh, that, how they are trying to make it uh, more uh, uh, suitable for diverse uh, uh, kind of style of our society, that is a good uh, sort of approach that he has followed. And uh, uh, the feeling uh, that architecture on the environment of different crops, how they need to grow. Uh, that is the beauty of the breeder, how to uh, manipulate uh, the growth habit of uh, the crop and uh, make it suitable for the environment or uh, the situation as the crop. So the ego type of uh, scholars aren't ego type is very important. And I think it's uh, going to be an important uh, uh, technology as we uh, further improvise uh, farmers friendly, uh, consumers friendly, uh, the things will become more uh, uh, desired from larger section of our society point of view and it will be uh, adapted. Because if anything is new, it takes time for people to uh, get accustomed to those sort of things. So that's there. So our onslaught, onslaught from awareness creation point of view and highlighting the advantages and as we move further. Uh, production of the because it's hard and make the prices 
low rate, high or low or high, and also that uh, production from such situations, protected as well as uh, this uh, controlled environment, is going to be huge. As we know, these crops are very high yielding and may, many times uh, higher in the quality. So, uh, the, uh, the building is not occupied from the plant uh, architecture point of view, but from other states' point of view, which makes these crops suitable for uh, other than fresh market uh, consumption, so that uh, the uh, sustainability further increases and becomes uh, more. Uh, from that point of view, we, uh, we have had very nice talk from Dr. Saira, and I. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Dr. Kalia. Uh, there is some internet problem with Dr. Kalia. Uh, uh, I think we will attend in the next one. No? <coughs> you can see to it. Uh, um, we had very interesting and uh, practical talk from an experienced person, Dr. Sai Ram, the urban Kishan. And we want to popularize uh, urban horticulture in the uh, country, which is, uh, I uh, said in the beginning itself, that is a necessity. Whether uh, people agree or disagree is a different matter, but uh, to me it is a, uh, a necessity. Uh, keeping in view uh, the food horticulture uh, is uh, uh, of perishable nature and you can't transport those perishable commodities from long distance and bring them in fresh condition there. So uh, <clears throat> the consumer and the producer should be as close as possible. Uh, if what uh, Dr. Uh, um, Sairam has uh, pointed out, the consumer and the producer, same person, uh, it is possible. And in every house we can have it. What a better example can be than this? And he is working on those devices which uh, will be affordable one. And uh, I'm sure government of India, though I'm told that uh, there is a subsidy they have started national horticulture board on hydroponics but i am not aware of the uh, details of that but gradually i am sure government of india uh, the particular ministry will take care of that uh, keeping in view the importance of hydroponic which can can't be over emphasized over emphasized as you have seen uh, uh, dr sai ram's talk and the previous talk so and we will have uh, talk in the future also on that uh, the uh, <clears throat> thing which uh, I would like to emphasize here, only two things. Uh, breeding variety is suitable for such type of farming or for urban farming or urban horticulture, I say. And uh, concentrate on crops like saffron and others, which are high value crops. High value crops. And uh, though I said only two things, but the third thing, also, which Dr. Kalia has pointed out, the quality aspect we should uh, come out with the experimental proof that there is uh, not much of a difference in the quality of the produce. One thing is understandable, I think earlier also I said, hydroponic, uh, see hydro water. Water all the time available and we are making the uh, plant uh, uh, goody goody uh, comfortable. We are not putting the plant into stress. So plant is happy. So naturally the water content in the fresh produce would be higher than that. Uh, one which is grown in open condition and has gone under, uh, I don't know what, all sort of uh, stress. So that is understandable, but scientifically it has to be worked out. We have to harvest a particular nutrient per unit of area rather than per unit of uh, uh, produce. Per unit of area, how much you have harvested, then compare. Uh, I, I, I take it uh, that way. Perhaps in that way, the hydroponic or the soilless uh, cultivation or urban farming will excel in that. And yeah, nothing like that, the hygiene, which is very important. Uh, the hygiene will compensate most of the things. And it is most hygienic, keeping in view the all the methods of uh, production, particularly of fresh, this is the most hygienic way of producing the uh, produce. And the another point which he has rightly brought out nicely, uh, convincingly, uh, that the uh, quality of the produce is uh, more or less uh, 
more or less uniform, uniform, which matters, which matters from the producer, producer point of view and the consumer point of view also. Why do you look for A, B, C, D grade? Why not only two grades? Extraordinary grade and the uh, uh, <coughs> excellent grade. That's that's what only two uh, two 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 grades and uh, not much of a difference between two. And that's what the produce get. I have got a personal experience. The produce you get uh, almost uh, uniform, not a uh, big uh, difference in that because you are uniformly feeding or taking care of the produce. The another important contribution of urban farm I see in uh, making the LEDs uh, locally and that's what is required. This country needs indigenous technology for everything. See imported technology won't give you the prosperity. Indigenous technology will give you the prosperity because it will be not only the congenial but the affordable one. Now. And uh, uh, in most of the uh, cases when we talk about uh, we are considered the uh, people on a different level and uh, we forget the maintenance part. Whenever we talk, we don't talk about the maintenance part. And that is the most crucial one. Uh, one. So if it is uh, our own, the, 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 the component is our own, the maintenance won't be difficult. Otherwise, you get a thing from abroad and if something has gone wrong, you everything has gone but uh, there. So friends, I think uh, we had a wonderful talk on soilless, sunless horticulture. Sun, he has replaced with the LED and soil he has replaced with the, uh, some inert matter or water. So very interesting one. Um, hope uh, those who have attended, they must have enriched their knowledge and those who have not attended, they can see the uh, BSHF webinars on YouTube. And we will be in touch, uh, Dr. Sai Ram, uh, jointly because the uh, goal or the purpose of the organizers are the same to popularize urban farming. Uh, BSHF also is keen to popularize urban farming. Your, your main aim, yours is commercial one, ours uh, is uh, not. <coughs> ours is uh, seva 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 and that seva also i'm happy that uh, heartfelt foundation which we have not uh, heard from you we will invite you sometime again on that uh, the uh, <coughs> something uh, spiritual or something uh, that is very good uh, that you are running that uh, uh, foundation good luck for that so with these words once again i thank uh, uh, the <coughs> knowledgeable speaker experienced speaker the equally experienced or more experienced and knowledgeable uh, the co-organizers both have got a vast knowledge on horticulture i'm happy that uh, i have got a uh, excellent support uh, from both of them and uh, the <coughs> my friend uh, subham who is helping us to run the show uh, so uh, and uh, the viewers thanks to all uh, we will meet uh, next uh, Tuesday with the, I think, interesting talk on zero waste horticulture. Zero waste horticulture. Let us see what is that, uh, how the waste is minima, uh, <coughs> minimized in horticulture next Tuesday. Uh, till then, uh, goodbye. Thank you. Okay, sir. Time. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, good night. Thank you.